Ronald Dahl, the BFG. Marvelous years. Back in the cave, the big friendly giant sat down, Sophie down once again on the enormous table. Is your you quite snugly there in the night time? He asked. You isn't freezing cold. I'm fine, Sophie said. I can't help thinking, said the BFG about your poor mother and father. By now, they must be jipping and scumping. Stumping all over the house, shouting, Hello, hello, where is Sophie gone? I don't have a mother and father, Sophie said. They both died when I was a baby. Oh, you poor little scumplet, cried the BFG. Is you not missing them very badly? Not really, Sophie said, because I never knew them. You is making me sad, the BFG said, rubbing his eyes. Don't be sad, Sophie said. No one is going to be worrying too much about me. That place took me from was the village orphanage. We are all orphanage in there. You is an orphanage? Yes. How many is there in, in there? Ten of us, Sophie said. All little girls. Was you happy there? The BFG asked. I hate it, Sophie said. The woman who ran it was called Mrs. Clonkers. And it... She caught you breaking any of the rules, like getting out of bed at night or folding up your clothes. You got punished. How is you getting punished? He, she locked us in the dark cellar for a day and a night without let anything to eat or drink. The rotten old rotter strapter, cried the BFG. It was horrid, Sophie said. We used to dread it. There were rats down there. We could hear them creeping about. The filthy old fizz wiggler, shouted the BFG. That is the hardest thing I is hearing for years. You is making me sadder than ever. All at once, a huge tear that would have filled a bucket rolled down one of his, the BFG's cheeks and fell with a splash on the floor. It made quite a puddle. Sophie watched with astonishment. What a strange and moody creature this is, she thought. One moment he is telling me my head is full of squash flies, and the next moment his heart is melting for me because Mrs. Connor locks us in the cellar. A thing that worries me, Sophie said, is having to stay in the dreadful place for the rest of my life. The orphanage was pretty awful, but I wouldn't have been there forever, would I? All is my fault. The BFG said, I is the one who kid snatched you. Yet another enormous tear welled from his eye and splashed onto the floor. Now I come to think of it, I won't actually be here all that long, Sophie said. I is afraid you will, the BFG said. No, I won't, Sophie said. Those Berties out there are bound to snatch me sooner or later and have me for tea. I is never letting that happen, the BFG said. For a few minutes, the cave was silent. Then Sophie said, may I ask you a question? The BFG wiped the tear from his eyes and with the back of his hand and gave Sophie a long, thoughtful stare. Shoot away, he said. Would you please tell me what you were doing in the village last night? Why were you po poking that long trumpet thing in the Gucci's children's bedroom? and then blow through it. Aha, cried the BFG, sitting up suddenly in his chair. Now we is getting more than Oak Parker. And the suitcase you were carrying, Sophie said, what on earth was that all about? The BFG stared suspiciously at the small girl sitting cross-legged on the floor. You is asking me to tell me those will be big secrets. He said, secrets that nobody is ever hearing before. I won't tell a soul, Sophie said. I swear, he, how could I anyways? I am stuck here for the rest of my life. You could be telling the other giant. No, I wouldn't. I couldn't, Sophie said. You told me they would eat me up at, up the moment they saw me. And so they would, said the BFG. You is a human being, and human being is like... Straw buckles of ice and cream to those giants. 
If they are going to eat me the moment they see me, then I wouldn't have time to tell them anything. Would I? Sophie said. You wouldn't, the, said the BFG. Then why did you say I might? Because I is a brim buzz burgers, the BFG said. If you listen to everything I am saying, you would be getting irritated. Please tell me what you were doing in our village, Sophie said. I promise you could trust me. Would you teach me how to make an infant? The BFG asked, what do you mean? Sophie said, I would dearly love to have an infant to ride on. The BFG said dreamily, I would so much fun, so much love to have a jumpy big foot and go riding through the bean forest, picking peachy fruits off the trees all day long. This is a sizzling hot monk from pink country we is living in. Nothing grows in it except snow's comforts. I would love to go anywhere else and pick peachy fruits in a nearly morning from the back of the infant. Sophie was quite moved from the curious statement. Perhaps one day we will get you an elephant, she said, and peachy fruit as well. Now tell me what you were doing in the village. If you're really wanting to know, I am doing in your village, the BFG said. I is blowing a dream into the bedroom of those children. Blowing a dream, Sophie said. What do you mean? I is blowing dream blowing giant, the BFG said. When all the other giants are scalping off every day, what says Anne? Which to swap human beings, I is scuttling away to other dreams, plus it places to blow dreams into the bedroom of sleeping children. Nice dreams. Lovely golden dreams. Dreams that is giving the dreamers a happy life. Now hang on a minute, Sophie said. Where do you get these dreams? I collected them, the BFGs waving in t an arm towards all the rows and rows of bottles on the shelves. I has billions of them. You can't collect a dream, Sophie said. A dream isn't something you can catch hold of. You is never going to understand about it, the BFG said. That is, a, that is why I is wish, not wishing to tell you. Oh, please tell me, Sophie said. I will understand. Go on. Tell me how you collect dreams. Tell me everything. The BFG settled comfortably in a chair and crossed his legs. Dreams, he said, is very mysterious things. They is floating around in the air like a w little whippy misty bubbles. And all the time they search for sleeping people. Can you see them? Sophie asked. Never at first. Then how do you catch them if you can't see them? Sophie asked. Aha, said the BFG. Now we're getting on to the dark and dusty secrets. I won't tell a soul. I is trusting you, the BFG said. He closed his eyes and sat quite still for a moment. While well, Sophie waited a dream, he said, as if going circling through the night air is making a tiny hole, little buzzing, humming noise. But this little buzzy hum is so swiftly soft it is impossible for a human being to be hearing it. Can you hear it? Sophie asked. The BFG pointed up at the enormous truck wheeled ears, which he now being to move in and out. He performed this excite proudly with a proud, a proud smile on his face. Is you seeing these? He asked. How could... I miss them, Sophie said. They may be is looking a bit purpose for to you, the BFG said. But you will believe when I say they is a trial used years indeed. They is not to be coughed at. I'm sh quite sure they not, Sophie said. They is allowed now Allowing me to hear absolutely every single tricky little thing. You mean you can hear things I can't hear? Sophie said.
you is deaf as a dumpling compared with me. It's try the BFG. You is hearing only a thumping loud noise with those little carved little earwigs of yours. But I'm hearing all the secrets whispering of the world, such as what? Sylvie asked. In the country, he said. I is hearing the footsteps of the ladybird as she walk goes walking across the leaf. Honestly, Sylvie said, beginning to be impressed. What's more? I is hearing those footsteps very loud. The BFG said, when a ladybird is walking across a leaf, I is hearing the footstep going clumpity clump clump, like a giant's footstep. Good gracious me, Sophie said, what else can you hear? I is hearing little ants chitting to each other as they scuttle across in the soil. In soil. You mean you can hear ants talking every single word? The big of G said, although I is not exactly understand their language. Go on, Sophie said. Sometimes on a very clear night, the BFG said, and I, if I is swiveling my ears in the right direction, and here he swiveling his great ears downwards, so they were facing the ceiling. If I is swiveling them like this, and the night is very clear. I is sometimes hearing faraway music coming from the stars and the sky. A queer like shiver passed through Sylvie's body. She sat very quiet, waiting for more. My ears is what told me you was watching me out of the win- your window last night, the BFG said. But I didn't make a sound, Sophie said. I was hearing your heart beating across the road, BFG said. Loud as a drum. Go on, Sophie said. Please, I can hear plants and trees. Do they talk? Sophie asked. There is not exactly talking, the BFG said, but they is making noises. For instance, if I come along and I is picking a lovely flower, if I is twisted the stem of the flower till it breaks, then the plant is screaming. I can hear it screaming, the screaming very clear. You don't mean it, Sophie cried. How awful. It is screaming just like you would be screaming if someone was twisting your arm right off. Is that really true? Sophie asked. You think I is scribbling you? It is rather hard to believe. Then I is stopping right here, said the BFG sharply. I is not wishing to be called a flipster. Oh no. Uh, not calling you anything, Sylvie cried. I believe you. I do really. Please go on. The BFG gave her a long, hard stare. Sophie looked right back at him, her face open to his. I believe you, he said softly. She had offended him. She could see that. I would ever be to you. He said, I know you wouldn't, Sophie said, but you must understand that it isn't to believe such amazing things right away. Straight away. I understand that, the BFG said. So do please forgive me and go on, she said. He waited a while longer and then he said, it is the same with trees as it is with flowers. If I is chopping an axe into the trunk of a tree, I is a hearing sound coming from inside the heart of the tree. What sort of sound? Sophie asked. The soft moaning sound, the BFG said. It is like the sound an old man is making when he is dying slowly. He paused. The cave was very silent. Trees is living and growing just like you and me, he said. They are alive, so is plants. He was... Sitting very straight in his chair now, his hands clasped tightly together in front of him. His eyes, his face was bright, his eyes round and bright as two stars. Such wonderful and terrible sounds I is hearing, he said. Some of them you would never wish to be hearing yourself, but some is the gorgeous music. He seemed 
almost to be transfigured by the excitement of his thoughts. His face was beautiful in its blaze of emotions. Tell me more about them, Sophie said quietly. You just ought to be hearing the little mice talking, he said. The little mice is always talking to each other. I is hearing them as loud as my own voice. What do they say, Sophie asked. Only one mice know that, he said. Spiders is also talking a great deal. You might not be thinking it, but spiders is most tremendous matter matter box and when they is spinning their webs they is sing all the time they is sing sweeter than a night go who else do you hear sophie asked one of the biggest chat box book is the caterpillars um bft said what do they say they are angrily all the time about who is going to be the present prettiest butterfly that is all they is go ever talking about. Is there a dream floating around in their net home? Sophie asked. The BFG moved his great ears, his way that and that listening intensely. He took shook his head. There is no dream in there, he said. Expect it except in the bottles. I has a special place to go for catching dreams. They is not out often coming in giant country. How do you catch them? The way was catching butterflies. Sophie answered with a net. He stood up and crossed over the to the corner of the cave where a pole were leaning against the wall. The pole was about thirty feet long and there was a net of the end was about 30 feet and there was a net on the end of it here is a dream catcher he said grasping some pole in one hand every morning i is going out and searching new dreams to put my bottles suddenly he seemed to lose interest in the conversation i is getting hungry he said it's time to it is time for eat